two, three. All right, well, greetings, everybody. Welcome once again to the Rec Poker Podcast. As always, our official sponsor is Running Aces Racetrack Casino and Hotel, and a couple of other sponsors, Learn Pro Poker and Website Amp. Uh, this is another one of our chat editions, and tonight we're going to hang out with Sky Matsuhashi. Uh, you know him. Uh, he's been on the show a few times before. He's a podcaster. He's a coach. He's a trainer. He's a player, uh, and we're going to roll up our sleeves and dig into some cool stuff with Sky uh, tonight, but let's first introduce the panel. Uh, my name is Steve Fredland. I go by Rec Poker Steve in our Poker Stars home game, and I found a cool quote by Stephen Lubit, or Lube. I don't know who he is, but I like the quote. He says, poker is not simply a game of odds, moves, and calculations. It's a game of controlled and exploited emotions, including greed, fear, overconfidence, and anger. Nice. Uh, well, I'm Andrew Feist. I'm dealer 412 in the poker home games. Uh, and John Lennon, life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. Mm -hmm. And I'm uh, Chris Jones. I'm 5x5 five five on Poker Stars and Twitter. And I don't trust anyone who doesn't have a favorite hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Jim Reed, Bluff Starini in the home game and at Hold'em underscore Steelers on Twitter. And I'm just here to tell you that if you're playing online and you're not using a HUD, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> and I'm John Somsky, and I'm Poker Geek MN everywhere. And I have a quote from Somerset Mom. Poker is the only game fit for a grown man. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm Rob Washam. I'm Ratman 50 everywhere. And I found out that it, in Laughlin, there is no bluffing, just like in Paris at Kansas City. There's just no bluffing. You cannot bluff. They're going to call no matter what. So, Rob, at the, end of the, at the end of your tour, you're going to have to tell us all the places we can and where we cannot bluff. You're going to have to. <laughs> I will let you know. <laughs> if right. I can pull off a bluff in Samstown, <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> Good. You so, does that mean you overbet? Uh, it doesn't. Ma it doesn't matter. They, the bet. The the bet sizing is not a concept that most of the people are aware of. <laughs> well, well, so that's thing. When you've got it, then yeah. Well, you know, yeah. Okay. When I had it, it was it was obviously very easy to get paid. But if you don't have it, don't try to bluff them off of hand because when you bet, they just all they ask is how much is it. <laughs> <laughs> so so pro tip to you, Rob. Just try to have it more. All right. Yes, that's what I've been trying to do. <laughs> All right, well, guys, a couple of quick things before we jump in uh, to our conversation with Sky. Uh, we'll, we'll cover this stuff at the end in more detail, but just want to call it out. If you want to, uh, if you want to continue on in your PokerStars uh, membership, uh, you're playing the home games now. As of January 1, you need that free membership, and you need to have your PokerStars username in your free membership, or you're going to be suspended. All right, you've all been warned for the 10,000th time. Uh, we'll talk about it more. Uh, reach out if you have any questions. Also, Fareed Jatton, we got the training course coming up starting in February, exclusive for Rec Poker Nation. Information on the website. Again, we'll talk about it more later. We have a bunch of coupons and giveaways associated to that training, uh, with that training, uh, including tonight. We got a few folks here that are listening in, members. Uh, we're going to give away some, some discounts on that training. And finally, save the date, January 27th. It is our first award show, uh, and we are super fired up about it. It's going to be a great time, so uh, mark your calendars for that deal. But with that, uh, let's bring him in. Uh, Sky Matsuhashi, how are we doing, Sky? I'm doing great. Thank you very much for having me, everybody. And I want to share one of my own favorite quotes. It's from Stephen King from one of his books called Wizard and Glass. And one of the characters said, um, <clears throat> Control what you can control, maggot, and let everything else ta take a flying F at you. And if you must go down, go down with your guns blazing. So it's one of my favorites. So a quote I try to live by. Nice. So, so when you first read that, were you like, man, this is right, right it, or did you just kind of stumble upon it later? No, I, as soon as I read that, I whipped out my quote journal and wrote it down right away. Nice. Yep. That's <laughs> Roland Trainer, right? That, uh, That's exa says that exactly. Oh, so yeah. you've read the Dark Tower series. Yeah, oh, yeah. One of my favorites. Absolutely. Good. Yeah, well, I yeah, wouldn't be surprised if we'll, Rob, you know, Rob, Rob Washam, you've got to read that one too. You'll enjoy that. I'll have to try to, I'll put it on my list of things to read. Yeah, it's <laughs> long though. It's seven books total. And, you know, Stephen King writes freaking, hold on. Well, I know I'm reading the wheel <laughs> for, for of all of you audio listeners like the like this, like this 700 pages. And this is the fourth book that I'm reading right now. I'm uh, uh, reading the wheel of time series right now. So <laughs> oh, oh, that's the best. What that's a the long best. series can that's be. That's really good. What book are you on? I'm only on book three right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Steve's yeah, going so crazy. So I got a long ways to go. <laughs> you do. 
Yeah. 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 Interesting yeah. thing is, uh, yeah, Robert Jordan passed away after the yep. 11th book. So the 12th yep. and 13th, it was written by Brandon Sanderson, but he did a great job keeping true to the story well, and the character. Yeah. So you'll Brandon's, enjoy it. Brandon Sanderson is one of my favorite authors anyway. So mm-hmm. I've read all of the stuff that he's written. So it's, yeah, it's very cool. Awesome. Can't wait to get into Rhythm of War, which is, I just came out, I think already just came out. So anyway. We found a rabbit hole, Steve. <laughs> well, no, you, you are listening, you know, you're listening to the podcast. Welcome to the show. Uh, we have sort of switched our genres. If you're expecting Rec Poker, you, you can now find that on, uh, on the Sunday release. Uh, the Tuesday releases are now the podcast. Uh, mm-hmm. We're going to be dropping things like Somerset Mom. Uh, John yeah. Lennon. <laughs> I will be discussing the merits of the Stephen King series. Uh, maybe we'll talk about HUDs, but that might not be nerdy enough for this group. We have to go to nope. other things like like book series. No, it's it's good stuff, you guys. I love it. I love just getting in there, man. Uh, it's it's fun. So so Sky, let's let's catch up a little bit. What's what's been happening? So you know we've had you on. Uh, people that have been with us for a while know that we had you on. I don't know two, three, four times uh, a couple years ago. Uh, now, what's been going on in your world uh, with, with the whole, the, the, the membership site, the, the writing, uh, the podcast? What's going on, man? Uh, I, I can't remember how many books I had the last time we I met about 377 ago, but books you had the last time. I think it was like, yeah, yeah. I, I think that was the number. <laughs> yep. But since then, for sure, I've written two more, pre-flop online poker and then post-flop online poker. They just really dive into the realm of online, utilizing HUDs like Jim. I know Jim's into HUDs. He loves it. Uh, it's all about using HUD, not all about using HUDs. It's about playing online poker, but utilizing your HUD to analyze your opponents, pay attention to what they're doing, look at their tendencies and stuff with the HUD, but then also just general pre-flop, post-flop strategies as well. And I also started the pokerforge.com, my training membership site, where I have eight full courses right now with the ninth one to come soon. And that's going really strong. And the Smart Poker Study podcast and the Daily Poker Tips podcast. So I've got lots going on right now. Okay. Yeah. So, so what do you, what are you enjoying the most of all the stuff that you're working on? I know it's not, it's an unfair question because everybody says, I love it all. And I, and I yeah. get it. But if you had to sort of choose one thing, what sort of really makes you come alive or what are you really enjoying? It's the Poker Forge, my, my training website. I'm constantly in there uh, in the Facebook group communicating with members and stuff, but I'm always going through listening to member requests, questions on things. And I come up with new content that fit into current existing courses and stuff. And I just really love interacting with them. The other things are great too. And one of the great things about what I do, uh, my job is multifaceted. There's so many different things I'm constantly involved in that it makes it interesting. I don't get bored with any one thing because I don't spend forever on that one thing. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. So I'm just looking at all the questions that are that are piling in. I'm like, everyone, feel free to ask questions, you guys. You guys know the drill. You have to jump in here uh, at any point in time. But I'll start off with with kind of the HUD thing. Uh, and I know we've talked about HUDs quite a bit. You know, Jim is is loves this thing. We actually <coughs> offer HUDs uh, through Rec Poker with different things. But but as a, as a casual recreational player that's maybe dabbling online now because of COVID, but doesn't really love it. Like you know, we're playing online some because we kind of have to to get our fix. But I haven't really dealt with HUDs. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, generally there's a lot of people out there that are kind of thinking like this. What would you have to say to them? Like, why should they really be considering a HUD? Even as sort of a casual player, what's the value of using a HUD versus, man, I'm just kind of, you know, I'm playing for fun. I want to win a little bit of money. But why, why look at a HUD? The value of it is free information. If you sat down at a live table and your friend told you, player in seat one, three bets like mad. Player two, believe all of his three bets. He's only doing the thesis. Just that little bit of information will help you make better decisions at the table. That's just live. Your buddy tells you about those two guys. Yeah. Well, online with a HUD, you have so much more information and it's free. Poker Tracker 4 is running in the background, records all the stats, all the tendencies of your opponents. It's just up to you to look at those numbers, interpret them, and then make plays based on those numbers to exploit what you know about them. Yeah, and I think, you know, you mentioned sort of capturing all the hands. That's another huge benefit that people don't really realize when you can go back and actually assess, you know, all of your, your profitability and all your, your, your own stats in different situations. That, that's huge. One, one question I have for you around the HUD is, um, you know, I played with it a little bit. I don't play much online personally, and I know a lot of people are in the same way. I, I layered on a HUD. I'm like, oh, it's kind of cool. But right away, it was like, this is intimidating. Like, it's too much information for the level that I want to play. And I'm going to be multitasking a little bit. Talk, talk about that. Like, is, 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 it, is it useful for somebody who just wants a couple pieces of information? And what are those couple pieces that you'd say, 
all right, here's what you really need to pay attention to. Like you said, if your buddy was going to stop by and, and kind of assess the table for you. Uh, before I get to that, I have one question for you. You're multitasking. So does that mean you're emailing and Twittering while you're trying to play good poker? Uh, I may or may not be developing like business strategies for people while I'm playing <laughs> online. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Uh, so what the two things, like the bare minimum that you need from a HUD, and if you only put these two pieces of information in your HUD, you're going to be such a better player or better at understanding your opponents. And that's VPIP and PFR. VPIP stands for voluntarily put money in the pot. So if you see, let's just look at two extremes, 1%. They never play anything uh, except for aces, right? Aces and kings. The other one, if they have 100% VPIP, they play every single hand, nine deuce off, ace, king, pocket fours, everything. So just seeing that one percentage will tell you how often they like to play their hands. And that gives you an indication of what hands that they play. The other one is PFR, which is pre-flop raise. And that tells you how often they make a raise pre-flop, whether it's an open raise, a three bet, a four bet, whatever it might be. Uh, so those two numbers are really helpful to classify your opponents. And one thing you want to look for is the gap in between the two. You can imagine if somebody is a 70% VPIP, they play 70% of hands, but there are 5% PFR, they only raise 5% of the time. Mm -hmm. That gap of 65% is them limping and calling all the time. They're a super loose passive fish and you could target them for value. And earlier, Rob was talking about playing in Laughlin, nobody folds. That 70 slash five player is never folding. Because he's never mm. folding, you're just going to go to value town on him and probably never bluff against him. So presumably that allows you then to play, I mean, obviously more tables at the same time because you kind of, you can just sort of look at those stats right away as you're reacting to, to their sort of action, right? Yeah, absolutely. Helps Mr. you to multi, a multi-table. Yeah, and the other thing that you just mentioned with uh, Poker Tracker, which I think that um, not as many rec players who are maybe starting to take the game seriously sort of think about, but I'm wondering if you can talk about the idea of, um, and you have two books on studying, uh, so I'm, I'm asking you specifically because this is something I think that you're really immersed in, is the idea of sort of like self-reflection or self-evaluation and how how a player even goes about that process. Like, how do I, I take, okay, I'm collecting all this information. I'm playing all these hands. I've got all this data. Now, what do I do with it? How do I then go look at that and try to improve myself as a player? There's a few different ways. The number one way that I would recommend is on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, or maybe every 5,000 hands, if you don't play all that often, you want to go through your stats and record specific statistical numbers and win rates. Win rates for everybody listening who's a rec player maybe has never thought about it. Like, you know, you go to a live poker game and you count your winnings at the end of the month. It took you 20 hours to get those winnings, so you made 20 bucks per hour. In online poker, we look at big blinds per 100 hands played. We don't really look at hours so much unless you want to because online players put in anywhere from five to 50,000 hands a month, right? Maybe 40 to 80 hours if they want to play that much. Well, looking at that win rate is important. So, uh, the best, some of the best win rates to look at would be like how, what, what your win rate is when you're calling a two bet preflop, when you're three betting, when you're C betting, when you're calling a C bet. So win rates for specific plays. Now, if you record these numbers for one week, the second week, the third week, the fourth week, and you see consistently red numbers across the board, every time I call C bets on the flop, I'm losing 200 big blinds per hundred hands. Every time in four weeks in a row, you have an issue right there. You're calling way too much. You need to be folding more or raising more. But regardless, there's your issue. Now you dive into those hands and where you call the C-bets and also do some C-bet calling strategy, like study an article, a video, and that kind of thing. And then review those hands around that leak that you found to figure out what you're doing wrong. So, so what do you think a good balance of that is? I think for a lot of recreational players, like, man, if I have any time at all, I'm gonna, I just want to play but I want to get better, but I'm not going to study. I'm not going to evaluate my own play. You know, I just want to play. And I, I think we just sort of think, well, the more we play, the better we're going to get. I don't know that that's true. What do you think is sort of a, I know it's different for everybody, but a, a general rule of thumb, if there is one or a balance of how much should I be playing versus how much actually, you know, studying, whether that's with my group of friends, whether it's evaluating my database, whether it's, you know, reading a book, how, how should we be thinking about that? One study session for every one or two play sessions. So if you're really gung-ho on improving your game, you play tonight for two hours, study tomorrow for between 10 and 30 minutes. 
however you want to do it. Like you mentioned a lot of different ways, whether it's database or reading an article video, but study with an idea that last night, maybe you had as you were playing, you were really focused on looking for good three bet bluffs mm-hmm. and you pulled the trigger a few times. Some of them were successful. Some of them not so successful. When you study the next day, study three bet bluffing, either strategies from a video or go through your hands where you had the chance to three bet and you did and you didn't and see if you missed any good opportunity. So pair your studies with your on the felt focus. So I've got a question that kind of takes off from there. You spoke a little earlier about some simple stats for HUD users to use to uh, to get the most out of their on-ramp into the HUD experience. Um, you've been working with HUDs for so long now. Um, are, are, what are some of the more sophisticated stats that you can still get a lot of information from at a glance or someone that's sort of getting better and they're thinking, you know, like, what are those really sexy stats that only Sky knows how to look for and get the most out of? <laughs> what, what are we talking about in that department? What, 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 what's turned your crank lately? So let's think about two different things, pre-flop first and then post-flop. So pre-flop, you're thinking about your opponents, they make a play and you want to look at the HUD look at their percentage related to that play to kind of get a gauge if they're full of bluffs or if they're only value in this spot. What I really like, and I've been really focusing on for myself, is paying attention to my opponent's three bet and their squeeze stats by position. So uh, for anybody who doesn't know, a squeeze is somebody open raises, somebody else calls, you come in with a three bet over those two, or if there's more callers, those, those callers right there. And when you look in your HUD and you see, for example, in the small blind, their three bet stat is only 5%, but their three bet squeeze is 15%. Wow. He loves to squeeze as a bluff in the small blind, but when he's just regular three betting, maybe half the time for value, half the time for bluffs. So you can plan ahead accordingly for that, right? If you open raise, somebody else calls and he squeezes in the small blind, he's probably bluffing. I can choose to call or I can come back over the top. But because he's probably bluffing, I might not want to fold. So that's a complicated, like using two different stats by position to gauge my own reaction to it. And another thing, if he's three bet squeezing a lot in the small blind, I can call someone else's open raise with the plan to come back over the top and shove it in his face when he squeezes me. Because he's squeeze bluffing, I might as well come back and steal that maybe 12, 15 big blinds, whatever size he made it right there. So that's, that's my first recommendation for preflop. For post-flop, I love, and I've always loved the C-bet and the fold to C-bet stats by street, flop, turn, and river. Uh, Two different exploits that you should start looking for. When you call somebody's pre-flop raise, they now have the opportunity to C-bet on the flop. You want to look for the street of honesty, and that's where their C-bet is really low. If they C-bet only 30%, that's very infrequently. It's probably only one pair hand or pair or better, plus maybe the best draws, like enough flush draw, right? Um, if it's really low, if it's high, like 70%, this guy's full of bluffs when you see betting. Well, what you want to look for is C bet high on the flop to low on the turn. He goes from 70 to 30%. This guy bluffs a lot on the flop, but he's honest on the turn. He doesn't like to double barrel. Against those guys, you're going to call them pre flop, maybe on the button. You call their flop C bet almost 100% of the time if it's a decent board and doesn't smack their raising range. You know, when they check the turn, bam, you fire bet and take that pot down because you're banking on his tendency of turn honesty. He only C bets when he's got it. He didn't C bet. I'm firing to take it down. That's, That's the first one. The second one is looking at any given street, the C bet and the fold to C bet at the same time. So you might see somebody on the flop who C bets 70% of the time, fold to C bets only 10% of the time. This person is not flop honest. They never fold on the flop. They always C bet as a bluff and they they don't like folding because it's only 10%. Bam, against that player, like Rob is talking about those people in Laughlin, you don't want to bluff them on the flop. They're just not going to fold. So instead value bet and because they don't fold, value bet big right there. Yeah, I love it. I'm like, oh, sweet. This is also good. I'm so <laughs> bummed. I don't have all, all the data uh, to support this. It seems like a lot of, a lot of fun to kind of dig into, right? Mm-hmm. It is. It is. And it just takes a lot of people, like you had said, when you first look at it, it's, it's intimidating. It's overwhelming. It's so many freaking numbers. Yeah. Just like if you start with a poker tracker for default HUD, just start with that default and just focus on VPIP and PFR, like I said. 
over time, just have a new focus every single session that you play. Today, I'm going to look at the three bet stat. So every time somebody three bets, look at the stat and try to gauge, are they bluffing? Are they doing this for value? The next session you play, fold to the C bet. Before you see bet, look at their fold to see bet stat, engage whether or not they're honest. And that might uh, lead you to making better C bets. I, I want to turn it over to Chris in one second, but I, I have a question about this. So if somebody doesn't play a lot online, I've, I've seen the HUD stats and I've you know played with the HUD. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's overwhelming because I'm lazy and I'm multitasking. I don't get into it. But I'm wondering, like you guys that play with the HUDs all the time, like when you go play live then, do you like sort of think in terms of HUD? Like, are you thinking like, oh, this person's opened a lot of pots. I'm just going to sort of characterize them as a high V pip. I'm going to, you know, they folded to a lot of continuation bets. I'm just going to sort of think about it that way. Does, it, does the HUD sort of form this construct for labeling players in a way? For me, absolutely it does. When I'm yeah. playing live, I'm thinking of the same thing. If this guy's limping a ton, he's just a fish. I'm going to think of him as a 40 slash 5, 70 slash cool. whatever he might appear to be to me. If somebody's three betting and they're aggressive and they see bet and double barrel and they triple barrel a lot, that's a loose aggressive player. So I'm going to play against them like I do my online competitors. Yeah. And I, I even think about them in the colors that I use on my HUD for different extremes of the range. Like uh, not, not even on purpose, but just I'll, I'll, and it's not like I think of, oh, that player's green and that player is red. But when I, you know, when I think about them strategically, I, oh, they're tagged red, you know, they're tagged green. And and I, and I think that really helps me just put them in a box that allows me to make better decisions about better assumptions about their range. Really. Um, I, do you find that cause, cause I, when I, when I play it, well, here, Rob, why don't you jump in? If you want? I was just going to say, it's kind of funny because I do it the opposite way. Um, I use the HUD when I'm playing online to try to understand what I already understand about a live player, because I don't, I haven't played as much online to use the HUD. So when I see a live player, that limp, 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 when I look at my HUD, I look at somebody that's a 40% beat. Go, well, that's, that's that guy that limps all the time. So it's the opposite of what you guys are doing because you're so HUD-oriented and I'm more live-oriented. So it's kind of, I use the HUD to try to understand what... what I'm the same way, Rob. I'm be. like, oh, they're, they're playing like this live person I know. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. interesting. That's where I'm at. That's perfect. The majority of mine's been live too before quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I played live like growing up for fun with like family members at Thanksgiving and that kind of thing. But as, as a real thoughtful poker player, uh, it's always been online for me. And I think it's a real, I think it's a real problem for me when I play live because I played online so much. I really do use the HUD as a crutch. And I'm, I'm even not all that good on like the simple mechanics of playing live. Uh, Sky, what's your take on that? Have you experienced that as well? Uh, I'm no, not, not, I mean, for me, I started off live, started playing uh, two, four limit back in the day, back in Oh three, you know, and then gradually like got into the online realm. And I, I rarely get back to the live realm. I mean, especially now with COVID, but pre COVID in the past year, March to March, uh, I was probably playing, or I probably played one time live. I didn't even go to Vegas in 2019 uh, for the World Series. So my live play has dropped dramatically since the start. So I kind of, um, uh, I, uh, I, I don't know. I just, I try to think in terms of what type of player they are and then make plays based, I don't know, exploit them based on that. Guy, one of the questions I see all, all the time, like on our forums and from rec player, are people who are just starting to start using HUDs and start to think about this and they want to get, they want to learn from it. They want to get better. But then there's this sense of like, I don't really know. Like I, I you know, the, and so a lot of the questions are like, well, I'm three betting 9% of the time. Is that good? Or is that bad? I'm, uh, I'm, you know, people, I'm C betting 50% of the time. Is that good? Or is that bad? And so, like, where can people find, are there resources out there where people can find some, like, some sort of general frameworks for their game to, like, compare where they're at with where they might want to strive to, to, to go towards? Yes, there are. Uh, Poker Tracker 4 has a set. You could probably Google Poker Tracker 4 Leak Tracker Videos. They have a set of 35, 40 different videos 
anywhere from three to five minutes long on different statistics. You watch those videos and they did a lot of research from all the players that use them in their databases and stuff. And they found that your average winner will have a VPIP of here to here, like, you know, 17 to 35%. Their CBET will be like 55 to 69%. Um, So you watch those videos and you'll get a sense of what's good or not. Now, so that's, that's the start. But what I try to tell my students, yes, that is where the average winner is, but that's not necessarily where you need to be. Like your opponents are the way they are. You're playing at um, uh, uh, Poker Stars versus America's Card Room versus 888 Poker. You're, you know, you're, as long as you're making good decisions and you're basing your play on who your opponent is, their range of hands, how it interacts with the board and all the other information, your stats kind of fall where they're going to fall. You know, you might be the perfect C better in your games and you're only C betting at 45% because nobody likes folding. So you don't often bluff and everybody uh, calls, you know, and gives you a ton of value. So you're going to be C betting them. And just naturally, if it falls at 45%, so be it. But if you're, if your stat is at 45 and the average range is 55 to 69, just for an example, then that's an indication of where you might have a leak. Then you can go through your database and look at CBET opportunities and see, oh my gosh, I missed five good bluffs here because you reviewed those hands, you saw the opponent, you saw that they're folding 65% of the time, you probably should have bluffed against them. That's so good. I, I want to talk a little bit about draws and maybe Chris will have a question related to draws because that's our, our, our December topic uh, for our monthly seminar. But the, the thing that's interesting for me about draws is uh, it, something with HUDs. Is there something that we can use to help us help inform us how we should play draws? Now there's their strategy about, you know, trying to maximize value and when we should be calling versus betting versus, you know, folding and all those things are sort of strategies. But uh, when it comes to the, using the HUD for some of those decisions, are there certain scenarios where you're like leaning on the HUD uh, in, in draw type situations, whether you have the draw or, you know, or you're, you, whether you're facing aggression or deciding if you should aggress? Yes. Um, it's not, the stat I'm going to say isn't draw related. It's just, uh, not, I'm sorry, not the stat I'm going to say. Whatever their play is, if they see bet, you're looking at their see bet stat. If they donk bet, you're looking at that. If they check raised your see bet, you're going to look at that stat as well. That percentage will tell you whether or not they're full of it or they're probably doing it for value. Now, whether you have a draw or not, you're going to base your play based on what you think that they're doing. So if you have a draw and you're getting a good price on the draw and they're full of bluffs, sure, calling is just fine because they only bet one quarter pot. You only need whatever, 25% equity, calling a quarter pot, you'll, uh, whatever. We don't need to get yeah, into the exact yeah. math, but you're getting the right price right there. So go ahead and make the call. But if they're bluffing a lot, you don't even have to hit your draw. You don't have to call. If you think they're folding a lot, maybe they're one stat C bet and then fold to a raise. Maybe that's high, like it's 65%. Go ahead and check raise with your, with your draw. If he calls, you might still hit it on the turn. And if he folds, great. You didn't have to hit your draw, but you picked up his C bet right there. So in and some cases, thing- it's sort of looking at, you know, responding. If, if they aggress, sort of looking at the stats and saying, oh, well, they tend to, you know, they tend to, this is too, too big of a number, so they tend to be, a bluffing too much in this spot. So that's going to change my play. So it's a reactive piece, but then there's also, it sounds like kind of a, a proactive piece of saying, well, if they overfold turns, I can semi bluff more often than maybe I would otherwise. Mm-hmm. Is that sort of Absolutely. Okay? And one of the things that a HUD's really good at is it gives you a lot of information right at the glance, just easy to understand numbers, usually in a percentage form. And usually what they're measuring is frequency. So the frequency of an action that helps you kind of define how big that range is. But the other side of that coin is the note tracker. And what that does is it actually collects the hands that that player went to showdown with and then goes and makes lists of all the circumstances that they did that with those hands. So when it comes to draws, it can actually tell you in the past, this player's played this draw passively, this player's played this draw aggressively. Um, It can say this player, you know, calls in position only with suited cards. So that would, you know, incline you to think that they're going to be in a more draw heavy situation, stuff like that. So um, between the two of them, getting the frequency uh, from one side and then the actual content of that frequency from the note tracker, I find it's just a really powerful way to, to really get to know somebody just by playing with them. Absolutely. That is super helpful. That note tracker, the, just the whole note editor thing. If you're taking notes, if you're paying attention to your opponents and you spot something that could be a future tell, you know, a large bet size, a check raise that's out of the ordinary, 
um, go ahead and you know keep that or take a note on them yourself within Poker Tracker 4. And those notes can be very helpful. Just like if you're playing live and you know between hands, you whip out Evernote and say, oh, Bob loves to, I don't know, whatever, whatever the note might be. Those things come back and they're useful in the future for exploiting your opponents. That kind of led into right what I was going to be talking about with came to notes and that kind of thing. So for your students, do you tell them to take a whole bunch of notes so they can come back to you and have a good study session. And then also like for a poker tracker, it does a lot of notes. Do you, obviously you want to take some more notes, but how much more, how much do you have your students rely on the, the poker tracker notes versus their personal notes? Um, their personal notes more. Now the poker tracker is super useful because as Jim was saying, it'll show you that they called the three bet preflop with uh, seven, six suited. So you know that they have that hand. They have seven six. They have eight seven. They have nine eight. They have ten eight. So like you know, basically just how it works. If they have that weak hand, they have all the better ones in their range as well. Those really help. But your own personal notes. I mean, you're the one paying attention. You should be the one paying attention to the action, trying to read into what your opponents are doing. And if you spot something that you think can be useful later, you've got to be taking those notes. Uh, and one thing I tell my students is they're often playing anywhere from two to five to seven tables. I have some players play. It's really hard to take notes in the moment at that time. So what you need to do when you're reviewing hands afterwards in your study sessions, that's when you need to take notes. You know, you saw Bob one, two, three, make this play in your study session. You're not going to remember that the next time you play Bob, you're seven tabling and you have uh, seven times six, 42 opponents that you're dealing with. You know, you're not going to remember that play about Bob. So take notes off the felt about your opponents as well. So what, what have you found is sort of, you know, as we start to kind of shift gears, we, we wrap up a little bit, but I'm curious, like what you found is some of the, the best study methods for people. So, you know, you're obviously a big fan of the HUD, uh, you know, playing with a HUD, going back and looking at your own sessions. Uh, I mean, are you sort of a proponent of an individual study plan, a group plan, listening, reading, you know, what, what would you say to the, the general rec poker that's out there going, I listen to the rec poker podcast. Maybe I listen to, listen to Sky's podcast as well, but and I kind of need something more and I don't know that I have the internal capability to just create that myself. I need something more. What would you tell people as far as how they can improve their game? Um, so two, two things. Uh, the first is hand reading. That is the most critical thing. If you go to my website, smartpokersari.com slash hand reading, you're going to find an, an, a super comprehensive tutorial on how to do hand reading. This is the most important thing. Hand reading forces you to think about the type of opponent that you're up against and the, the range of hands they play pre-flop. And then you take that range through the streets and then you narrow it based on their actions. Constantly doing that kind of work off the felt forces you, not forces you. It trains you to think about ranges as a habit in your brain as you're playing as well. So when you, you know, when you open a raise and then somebody calls in the big blind, your mind's just naturally going to think, oh, he has this, this, this type of hand. You're not going to visualize in your mind the complete range, you know, but you're going to at least have an idea now of his range. When that flop hits, bam, you think, oh, his range interacts well with the flop. I better be careful or not at all. I can bluff away. That kind of thing. So hand reading is the number one skill. But beyond that, if there's one thing that I can recommend for anybody to study and to use on the felt and off the felt, it's poker's ultimate question. And that question is, what is he doing this with? So your opponent C bets. Instead of just, oh, I have a draw, I call. No, no, no. Um, I have nothing, I fold. No, no, no. What is he doing this with? To answer that question properly, it forces you to think about his range of hands, the type of player he is, his bet size, how his range interacts with the board, his position. He's out of position against you. Maybe he's in position. That might have an effect. So that is the one thing. If you can train your mind as a habit to always ask that question when your opponent makes an act, makes an act. He open raises. What's he doing this with? He three bet me. What's he doing this with? He bet on the river. What's he doing this with? The answer to that question will always guide your button click. And without doing any studying, just having that question in your mind and answering it, you're going to be a much better player making better decisions. I, I love that so much. I love the, you know, it's, it's the motivation of what they're doing and why they're doing it. And, uh, and I think then our response to that should be a court. I think, I think some people struggle with what is the response then? Okay. Well, see, I know they're doing this with, or I think they're doing this with this range. So uh, you know, I think, I think for a lot of people, they still need that next step of, okay, now I've gotten there. But, but if you can't answer that question, to your point, you're completely guessing. You're completely lost. You have to have that first piece. Yeah, exactly. And I can answer that. 
uh, you know, so if you answer that question, he's full of bluffs right now. The next step is to think about your options. The great thing for online players is that when it's your turn to act, three buttons pop up, fold, call, raise. Those should remind you. Those are your friends. Those are your best friends on the table <laughs> besides the HUD. They remind you that you have options. You don't just have to call when you yeah. have that draw. You don't have to call with second pair. Uh, you can fold. You can raise as well. So once you answer that question and you have a good idea of what he's on, then think about your options. Which is my best option? Should I fold? Should I call? Should I raise? And that's what you need to do. I mean, there's a ton more. We can get specific strategies right. and stuff, but those two things, you'll be such a better player. But, but that's sort of where the creativity comes in, right? Like often we don't think it's fold or call. We don't necessarily mm-hmm. think of that raise as the, as the next option. And I think for a lot of the recreational players, as we've been working with free jet and two are saying, I want to add some aggression to my game. And I think sometimes it, I just feel like it just starts with asking the question, could I raise here? I think a lot of us yeah. don't even consider that as an option uh, in a lot of spots. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if well, your uh, audience wants to increase their aggression, uh, two ways you do it, do it on the button or in the cutoff. So if you're going to be open raising more, to choose those two best positions just to start testing out the king nine suited, the queen eight suited as your open raise, right? In those two. And post flop, make your make more, be more willing to bet when you're in position against your opponents right there. Mm-hmm. So if you want to increase aggression, that's it. The two best positions pre-flop, in position post flop. I love it. And that's, because that's something we've talked about is people say, I want to be more aggressive. So they just start being more aggressive without like a, a strategy on how they just sort of like everything becomes more aggressive. And so they end up sort of, you know, they, they end up three betting the under the gun razor and all kinds of things more often. And that's usually a recipe for disaster. So I, I want to give you an opportunity to talk about what's going on more specifically. Uh, you know, I know you've got some stuff coming up here that you're, you're promoting over the holidays. Uh, and then we have the Poker Forge. I know we've got a relationship now with you on that. Smart Poker Study Podcast. T- tell us what's going on in your world. What should people be paying attention to? What's coming out of the Sky Matsuhashi camp that people should be signing up for? And then I guess also how can they just connect with you if they're like, okay, I don't know about all this, but I need to connect. Uh, tell us a little bit about your story, what's available. Yeah, definitely. Right now I'm running a big promotion free 14 day trial with the poker forge. I've never done a free trial before. Uh, and it's going on, just go to thepokerforge.com. You can sign up 14 days, absolutely free. And then you can check out all eight masterclass courses that courses that I have inside the forge, along with all of the different bonus stuff and go on on with that. Um, some of your listeners might be familiar because I'm doing the 12 days of poker or I'm sorry, 12 days of Christmas right now. It's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. It is the same thing for us for sure. Um, Every single podcast episode, the Daily Poker Tips and the Smart Poker Study podcast, they all revolve around a lot of players have an issue and they think that it might be impossible to make money with online poker. Mm -hmm. During these 12 days of Christmas, each podcast episode is addressing one of those common issues, like people thinking that they need to be a math person to make money in online poker. They need to have time to study and play. They need to get beyond their wife telling them no more poker, right? There's all these objections people have to having a profitable online poker journey and the 12 days of Christmas answers those objections. Uh, And then uh, if you want to connect with me, just at Smart Poker Study on Twitter, or of course, just go to the smartpokerstudy.com page, leave a comment on anything. I respond to everything in YouTube. I'm Smart Poker Study. I respond to every comment there as well. So it's pretty easy to contact me. Yeah, you're very easy to get a hold of. And if you have problems, uh, just reach out to us and we will make the connection for sure. I do have another question, sort of, uh, I wasn't expecting to ask this one, but what's your perspective on having Aaron Rodgers as your wallpaper during a Zoom meeting? What's your, do you have any thoughts on that? Because uh, it drives me crazy. It does it really well. Um, my we're, only we're from experience. Minnesota, so this drives me crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. so how's the division lead going? Oh, that's right. We clinched it. Oh. Hey, my oh. bad. Where's that mute, where's that mute button? Rude. Where's that mute no, button? Um, Rude. There it is. Sky, so what's your perspective on Aaron Rodgers? As a, is that the right kind of wallpaper you should be using for a Zoom meeting? Hey, man, whatever you're into, I'm down with it. I mean, you can see in the background, I have a few different manga and comic book stuff on my walls. I mean, you know, you, you post to what you're interested in. As far as Aaron Rodgers goes, the only experience I ever have, the only thought I've really given him was my first fantasy football league. I drafted him as my quarterback. And this might have been back in, oh, no, like in 2010. It was a long time ago. but 2010 was a good year to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then it wasn't 2010. It was a year. Well, because it, it was a year where he got injured five games in, five oh, weeks in, man. and he was out for the rest of the season. 
maybe a bar hit or something. Hopefully, the, hopefully the, the Anthony Parker Bar podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> Packer podcast now. Well, yeah. well, good, good stuff, Sky. Any, I guess, any final questions for Sky? You guys, I know this, this time goes by really, really quick, and we all have questions. But uh, any, any burning stuff that we need to know from Sky? We could, he's he's real free with his chime on Twitter. So if yeah. we forget something, we'll just reach out. I know it. Yep, Sky, you're you're awesome, man. You've been a great friend of the show over the years. Uh, when we were fledgling and now we're only mini fledgling. Uh, so maybe in five years we'll be, you know, medium fledgling, but, uh, but man, we appreciate your time. Good friend of the show. Great poker mind, uh, very approachable, easy to learn from you guys. Uh, I know a lot of folks are like, okay, this, this person's overwhelming. Sky is not that Sky is very, uh, very good at taking complex subjects, boiling them down saying, here's what you need to know. So I really encourage you guys listen to the podcast, check out the website, take advantage of the free trial. Uh, but Sky, man, thanks a lot for being here. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it, guys. I had a good time. All right, we'll, we'll chat again soon. Uh, as Sky heads off, guys, we're going to transition to kind of the community piece. One thing, man, we, we talked about this. If you are a premium member and you're hanging out with us, we got a drawing. We're going to be drawing for 50 bucks off the free Jatin uh, training course. If you've already signed up for the course, we'll just refund you 50 bucks. It, it's just like cash. So you can still go ahead and sign up for the course. Uh, you're not going to miss out if you happen to get a coupon. Uh, we've got our live stuff that we record. We're giving away uh, coupons. We've got all these Easter eggs all over. If you respond to the newsletter, all kinds of stuff uh, to enter drawings for other coupons. So uh, we're trying to make it as affordable as possible uh, to enter into this training, but it's, it's top notch training. You guys like it's, it's 20 hours of training with the fifth best poker player in the world. Uh, and he is the real deal, man. Um, I, I, let me, let me tell you this about Freed. So, you know, we had a conversation with him. Um, we're doing some work with his, his business. Fantastic guy. So he's out in Vegas, right? He goes out there to play the main event, uh, which he did cash. He bust, just busted uh, like 68th or something, 64th. But anyway, he's out in Vegas. Uh, I won't put the name out here because I don't know if he, he cares, but there's somebody, part of Rec Poker Nation, who was also out in Vegas. I said, oh, let's connect the two of them. They connect. They end up having dinner together like and hanging out that night. They were just hanging out that night, having, having dinner drinks. Fareed is the real deal on and off the felt. Uh, and I think um, not only will you enjoy the course from a learning perspective, but just the guy just brings energy and brings life uh, and positivity everywhere he goes. So I really want to encourage you guys to check that out. But, but Jim, I don't know if you have a plan on, on giving away this, if we should do it now, if you want to wait, what's your yeah, thought? Let's just, let's just do it. I like using my nerd dice for this kind of stuff. And, yeah. Any uh, chance Jim has to use a dice? Uh, you can actually just use a six sided dice, Jim. You don't need to use yeah, a, I know. I'm just a 20 use a sided boring, nerd dice. I'm just going to use a boring uh, old, of course it's black and yellow just in case <laughs> there was any question as to how that would work. out. So, so well, let I us see. know who wins this bad boy. Yeah, I see we've got five people in here, so I'm just going to take the six out of play, and we'll roll it, and we'll count it down from top from five down. Here we go. One, two, three. Kim, Kim. gets 50 bucks off the free Jatin training course at Rec.Poker. I'm, congrats, Kim. Fantastic. One of our Canadian friends uh, dominates the home game. Uh, I just can't believe it wasn't a two that was rolled there. I cannot believe yeah, Doug, Doug didn't win the die roll. I just, <laughs> I'm, I'm in shock, but... Didn't Congrats, Doug already Kim. win one of these giveaways? <laughs> I know, I know. Well, so guys, let's let's talk a little bit about Sky. What sort of reaction, kind of uh, coming back out of that conversation? What did you guys pull out of there? Uh, I know you kind of all asked a bunch of different questions, but what, what was your takeaways? I like his energy. I mean, he's he's got a very positive, very very strong energy. Where he, you obviously can tell this is something he's very passionate about, which happens a lot around here. But that's because we're all passionate about poker. But it's still, it's I just like the like his approach and. He takes more of a statistical side of it than I usually would, like like Jim would with the HUDs. And I'm coming from live, so it is an adjustment for me, but it's it's always nice to have that too. He's got that great radio voice, right? Like I always wish like I was like that where I he was just he's just so articulate and calm and sharing and I'm like woo, 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 but he's he's very uh, I love the way he talks. Somsky? Well, I was actually going to mention the same thing. While you sense his passion, he also has a, a calmness about him. And, you know, it's like if you compare that to someone like Mike Matisau, who's also passionate about the game, but has zero calmness at all, <laughs> you know. So it, it's just really nice to be able to listen to him. And uh, he does a good job at explaining things. It's very thorough, thought out. Is, is, nice. guy, is guy a 2.7 listenable guy or whatever you listen uh, to speed-wise? Oh yeah, I, he'd be triple time uh, because he's he has he enunciates very well and he talks slowly. So 
no yeah. problem speeding That's it one up. of the fastest ones I listen to because it's very clear and very easy yeah, to listen to. I bet. The bass, the bass comes through of his voice comes through much better. Technically sound. He's 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 you know, he's got it all figured out. Of course. I think you said it the best, Steve, when you mentioned that. Uh, oh, nice, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You said it. You said it the best when you you said how he breaks down things so that you can understand him so well. And that's what I found in in since I started watching or listening to his podcast way in the beginning. And then if you if you want some individual um actionable training go to his youtube channel i mean there's he has all his stuff out there about how to use huds how they work uh what all the stats mean how to analyze your own play he does it all right on right on youtube and it's so easy to understand you can just walk right through it step by step and it's really uh really good yeah, i love you've been, the- you've been talking about him as you've been a fan of his for a long time rob yeah. you know, i know that chris yeah. go ahead sorry no, the thing I took away tonight, like, you know, uh, I, I use a HUD and, and I, I think about things a lot, but the thing that I took away the most was when he talked about the street of honesty. I yeah, loved I love that. that concept. I never uh, really, you know, I, I definitely look for that, but I never, that's a really like concrete way to think about people's stats and, <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, just basic zoom photos as well. But no, it's, it's <laughs> that street of honesty thing where you're looking at people's CBET um, thing because people have real tendencies on that. Um, so I, I love that concept. Uh, I, did, I wrote that down to street of honesty. And in case you're listening to this, I know most of our listeners are, our, our, our most of our watchers are just listeners. You don't see the video, but uh, we're having a little bit of fun with our Zoom background. So if you're wondering why there's turtling going on, uh, there's a lot of Viking versus Packer uh, <laughs> Zoom background switching going on right now. But yeah, no, I, I love that too, Chris. I love that idea. Because that's, that's kind of my question. I don't really use HUDs. Uh, well, I really don't play online. When I do, I, I kind of get confused. I'm like, I don't really know how to use this the best. Uh, so I, I think that was a good insight. Well, let's, uh, let's shift gears, guys. Let's talk about uh, what's going on in Rec Poker Nation a little bit. We teased uh, some of it on the front end with what's going on, but maybe let's start with Mr. Somsky because I think um, I do think one of the bigger pieces of information, we have a lot of great stuff, uh, is our Rec Poker home games. And, and I don't know how often to say this, how well we can say this, but you will be suspended. You'll be kicked out of the Poker Stars home game if you do not have a free Rec Poker membership or higher. And if you do not have your PokerStars username in your extended profile on your Rec Poker account, if you don't have those on January 1st, you won't be part of the PokerStars home game. So, you know, there's how much is at stake? I don't know, but you're going to start getting behind uh, on our player of the year stuff. Uh, so, uh, John, I'll turn it over to you, but I just want to make sure that, that people realize this is, a, this is going to happen. Um, you will be suspended if you're not set up. Uh, and the point of that is, again, we're trying to build community, and this is how we're going to do it. But, John, you want to, any? did I miss something on that at all? Or No, that uh, sounds good. We still have 170 players that are um, at risk for suspension. Now, that's compared to 135 players who are in good standing. In other we're words, over, now? Half, over half of our club, yeah, we're over 300. We're at 308, okay. I think, or something like that. Um, but over half of our club will be suspended on January 1st as things sit right now. You still have time to create your uh, your profile in Rec Poker and put your Poker Stars username in the profile. Again, it doesn't have to be public unless you want it to be, and it's totally up to you. If you want your name to be uh, announced on the podcast when we announce these winners, then your Poker Stars username needs to be public and your name needs to be public on your profile. Now, can we, uh, is, I, I assume we can kick out Magger 44, right? We're not, that, that username is never going to be accepted into the club again. Is that my understanding? <laughs> well, actually, if he wins two more tournaments, he's hit his quota. And then he will be unable to play because that's the maximum nice. poker stars will We have allow. a lifetime maximum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, <laughs> anyway, uh, another piece of uh home game news before we get to the stuff people everyone actually really wants to hear the um some interesting things are going to be happening with the international series and with some of the other uh things that are going on we realized that the these are all really just 
additional daily tournaments that we're having. So we're going to be rebranding the nightly series as our daily series, no matter what time of day it is. The international uh, series are just going to be two international-based tournaments within the daily series. Also, we do have every Saturday now, there's going to be an additional mix game. So we're not taking away the No Limit Hold'em, but there'll also be a mix game there. And it'll be the same format that the next mix game series will have. So it'll give you a few opportunities to practice that before you actually play for the points. Wait a second, John. Are you saying on Saturdays we're running four tournaments and two of them are mixed games? Yeah, that means Sundays I need to enter the results for four <laughs> tournaments. <laughs> not, two of them are not mixed games. Just one of them is a mixed game. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Good point. One, the rest, yes. All three others are uh, for the um, No Limit Hold'em stuff. I'm really glad we're having the practice, too, because uh, I was playing the five-card single draw, five-card draw, single draw, whatever. They call yep. it as practice. You know, again, now it's multi multitasking with two other tournaments going on. And twice in the first orbit, I'm like, okay, I drew once, and now I got this big draw, like a huge combo draw <laughs> after that first draw, and somebody bets half pot, and I call because I got like this massive draw, and then the cards were exposed. There was no second draw. <laughs> I'm like, <Yep. laughs> I got a big, it's like getting, I have a big draw on the river in Texas Hold'em, and I'm calling off uh, for a big chunk of my stack. I did that twice in the first orbit, so, ah, single draw. So I'm glad we have the practice. Yeah, and I'm not sure a HUD's going to help with that, Steve. You're going <laughs> to no, have to just. Yeah, I didn't have a HUD. <laughs> <laughs> Where does the HUD tell you how many cards you get to oh, draw? Right, right. <laughs> how many draws we have? <laughs> anyway, yeah. So John, thanks again for that. So yeah. So uh, what I'm hearing is that we've got the month. Well, the monthly no limit hold'em once a month, first Wednesday. Yep. Boom! There'll be a player of the year in points and a player of the year tournament next year. And then there's the second Wednesday is going to be the mix series. The mix series, the one that actually counts. There'll be player of the year points for that. Everything else we're just going to lump in. The, we'll call it a daily tournament just for the sake of uh, management piece but there's going to be a bunch of them going on and who knows what else we're going to do. And one other uh, note, if you play in what has been up till now known as the uh, international series from now on, that will qualify you for winning a bronze pin in addition to getting into the uh, daily or into the tournament, tournament champions. champions. Yep. However, this, you get one, bronze pin per year for the entire daily series so yeah. it doesn't matter whether you win the international tournament whether you win one of the practice mix tournaments or one of the other daily tournaments you still get one bronze pin for the year but it gives you another opportunity to run it and these international tournaments are still running a little bit uh, lower on the field counts mm -hmm. although uh, this weekend, we had a good turnout for both of them. I think 16 for the lower one and 20-something for the oh, nice. higher one. So it was a uh, good turnout. Nice. Okay, now we are actually on to the actual news that we have to... <laughs> uh, we're done with the preamble there. We're warmed up. Yeah, we did have our mix series this last week. It was eight-game mix, which is one of my favorites because it has eight different formats to run in. I am not sure whether or not I lasted long enough to play <laughs> each of the eight. Uh, my particular performance was not good in this tournament. However, uh, it seems very fitting that yep. Patty98 wins the final tournament of, of the year. Oh, he, Canada. <laughs> God bless that guy. He's yeah, kicking butt. Absolutely. He won in... Uh, January. He won in February. Then he decided to take a little break, and Taylor Moss won in March. And then he came back and won in April. And now he's come back, and he's won in December. So he won four of the 12 thir tournaments, Amazing. a full third of the tournaments that we had that y this year. Uh, he got 462.98 points. Now that's put him easily in first place. The second place finisher, which unfortunately was the aforementioned Taylor Moss, go for boy TJM, <laughs> uh, got 262 wow. points. So that's 200 point difference between wow. the two. That is wow. uh, dominating, dominating. I mean, I know uh, one of the first. one of the things we're planning on giving away at the award show. I don't know if it's if it's official yet. Is performance of the year. 
Uh, and that, that's got to be one of the candidates, right? I mean, there's been a few pretty amazing things, but that, I mean, the mixed game performance? Yeah. Be a- I, I mean, it, just off the top of my head here, and I'm not involved in picking the people, and I haven't been involved in those conversations. So this is not a spoiler. But for me, the the two of the biggest things we've seen are it's Patty 98 and then just, in general, Magra 44. Yeah, I agree. Um, Yep. Those are just two phenomenal uh, yep. accomplishments. Yep. So I think those, those are probably a couple of our nominees. Uh, we have put it out there to, to a lot of Rec Poker Nation, a survey uh, collecting nominees for different things. So if you haven't gotten it, uh, do or, you know, ask. But if you've gotten it, do that survey. Um, yeah. Yeah, look at Twitter, too. Like, and look at the newsletter. We're going to put it out there a couple of times. And we need help. We need help picking, uh, voting for people. We need help naming these darn things. So please do fill out that survey. We appreciate it. All right, John. So we let you get through the first result. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to go on uh, to what used to be known as the International Series. And, of course, we have Magra 44, Doug Grayback, 1 God. 8 a.m. Never ends with this. For his sixth international oh, uh, victory. And then we had Rick the D- Good Dog, Rick Rock Oman. Yes. Won his very first international game. Oh, is this, I think it was his first overall. He's won other ones. I think that's his first international. Yeah, just the first yeah, international. Yeah, okay. Nice, Rick. And, yeah, Rick. and I'm going to, I think I'm going to try to keep keeping track of who, how many international wins you have, but it'll also, I'll be reporting how many overall dailies you have, but we'll. Amazing. We'll and then we start. Better. Are we starting that at, at one again in 2021 or uh, is it per year or are you going to have to actually keep track of like lifetime wins? And- oh, we'll have it all. I, right now I'm planning on doing lifetime. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. So, I mean, that's the way the spreadsheet works. And yep. uh, in the future, we'll have a little bit more flexibility on what we do, but that's where we're at right now. Okay. Then in our normal nightly or new to, newly daily series, uh, I hate to lose William Alexander got his fourth nightly nice. victory. Sure. Uh, I N uh, or is N N M A Spike <laughs> got his first nightly series victory. Uncle Tom's Cabin, Jeff S second nightly. Uh, Rick the Good Dog, Rick Rock Omen got his Rick. third nightly. So he got two victories in the same week. Nice. Uh, Keto Man three three five, who I want to apologize for having evidently mispronounced his name. I was on a different uh, podcast with him and he said, yeah, you always leave this name off. And that was a little bit of a humble brag that I've had to mention his name. (laughs) Kevin, Kian Tavakoli. So hopefully I got that right for you. Got his first uh, nightly mix series victory. There you go, Kian. And uh, GF Hawk, who has a private name, got his first, nightly victory nice yeah nice to see, see, right. see some new winners in there yeah it's nice awesome and we're getting still we're getting what 70 people or so on these nightly tournaments somewhere in that ballpark yes. Crazy. on a slow night we'll get in the 50s on a big night in the 70s so so the eight game mixed tournament um i was excited to jump in there i figure i'll play for half an hour and then i'll move on with my day um, I did get third in that, so it's a little bit of a sick break, but I didn't know what I was doing. I'm Googling every game that comes up, like Raz, I'm like calling, I'm calling with like ace two, three, five, because I've got, I got the nuts, right? Or whatever. No, no, ace is high and Raz. I don't know what I'm doing, and somehow I got lucky. No, ace but... is low and Raz. <laughs> oh, maybe it's the other, the other one. Then. I don't even know. Yeah, it was yeah. the other one. It's deuce to seven. seven. Deuce there to seven. Go. I thought, I got this thing, baby. I'm so golden here. Yeah, that was, I don't even know. Kidding. I can't even pronounce it the right way. But anyway, it's two in the morning. I was like six hours, and I didn't even get heads up. I was so depressed. So that's uh, one thing we should do um, is remind me to uh, do the um, next year. I'll I'll go a little faster for this. It it was super fun, and I know – Because we have the – a couple of no limit and pot limit yeah. in there. And normally if there's no limit and pot limit, that kind of takes the edge off, but you still end up having um, six limit games versus the two. Yeah. Big bet. So. Oh, it, it, I wasn't complaining. It was just sort of it was interesting. I'm like, I was so depressed. I got that far and then didn't win it. It would have been worth it if I would have, if I would have won it. But yeah, I know that that's gotta be super tough. Cause I know some of the, some of the mixed games, they get done really quick and 
Ugh, a nightmare. Thanks for doing that, John. I know it's, it's a nightmare, but, uh, but no, super fun. I love jumping in there. I love all the camaraderie that's out there. And, uh, you know, Danny Schneider, always trying to figure out people's names that won't tell us our, their names. Yeah. Uh, it's just pretty fun. So thank you, John. But, well, what else is going on, guys, that we need to talk about? I got a few things, but who else has something they want to bring up? Well, we're doing our weekly study groups now. All the premium members that are enjoying Chris's uh, take on the focus. We're talking about uh, pre-flop ranges. And so every weekend on Saturday morning, a few of us get together just to compare notes. Sometimes we talk about the focus. Sometimes we just talk about other cool things going on in poker. So uh, any premium member, just email jim at rec.poker. I'll send you the invite. It's been a lot of fun so far. Sweet. And we have the, uh, we have the free chat and training coming up starting in February. So uh, it's going to be fantastic. If you have any questions, let me know. We put the products out in the stores. You can go out to rec.poker in the shop and you can select uh, select the product there. Uh, it kind of lays out the discounts you get. Uh, if you are a premium member, uh, if you want to become a member, any of those sorts of things, we'll get you discounts. Uh, and at the end of the day, just you know, just email me. I'll send you the code for for what makes sense for your situation. I uh, will give you a discount there, and you can win win coupons and, and stuff through drawings and otherwise. Jim. Yeah, I was just going to say, and, and we haven't talked about uh, learning with partners in a while, but I know Andrew's putting together a whole new slate of uh, clips for the first part of 2021. And I am so excited, uh, just in case people are listening that haven't heard in a while. Every month, we take 15 minutes of this premium learning stuff from other top sites around the world. And Andrew selects them just for our premium members to come and take a look at. And then if we like, we can all get together and talk about it afterwards. But there is some really cutting edge strategy being done. At rec poker, it's yeah, it's pretty cool, right? So it's like an hour of premium content from other providers that's just sort of included in your in your rec poker membership. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, the, the award show, I know I mentioned it again, I'll, I mentioned it before, I'll mention it again, January 27th. It's going to be a blast. We got about a dozen pros already that have said, uh, yeah, I'll, 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 I'd love to give a giveaway an award. So just tell me uh, what the award is and who won what, and they'll either be live or they'll be on video uh, giving the award away. So that's going to be super fun and kind of add to that whole, the whole night. Jonesy? Yeah, no, I, I, I just in terms of uh, member land, we're 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 having a uh, we're getting excited that the next uh, seminar is going to be on tells. Our mm-hmm. December ones on draws, um, so we're really looking forward to that conversation too. Awesome, Robert. How are you? Oh, I was I was just saying. I think we should call the award the Oswald. I just <laughs> you know, there's the Tony, there's the Oscar, and. You know, we had the 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 first inaugural rec poker day was on St. Oswald's Day, <laughs> so I'm just thinking that why not just call it the Oswald? I just just for you know, I just just a we'll suggestion. To. Rob, Rob, <laughs> Rob, starting a yes. Yeah, so we asked one of the uh, I know it's one of the questions we put on the survey is what should we call these things? Uh, and I know we've gotten like twenty or thirty responses or something so far. Uh, so they're starting to come in. People have some good ideas, but keep them coming. Maybe uh, jump on <laughs> Rob's bandwagon and you can write in the Oswald. The uh, Oswald. We call it the Oswald. I love that. That's a, <laughs> what a great name. Anyway, we got the book study coming up um, on uh, this week. And, and I don't know when this is going to go out. Some people might not know. But this will be second, released on the 22nd. Okay. This then we'll already have done this. But anyway, um, <laughs> the, the first Wednesday and the and the third Wednesday of each of each month, um, we do the book study, and we have covered all the main four chapters of the book. And now we're going to go through and do the quiz hands that Chris has put out there for us to and uh, ask ourselves these questions and how do you react and what do you do based on what we've learned so far in the first four sections. So um, we'll probably do that um, this. Um, this next one, and then hopefully we can get Chris on board and we can do a quick Q&A with Chris uh, to finish up that book study. And then just for everybody's information, we're probably going to take a break from the book study because we have the, the, some stuff coming up with Fareed and uh, that's going to be on the same day. So we could be taking a, a break from the book study, but what I would like everyone to do is send me a twit, a twit tweet a twit yeah send i can't send jim twit. through the mail <laughs> <laughs> send me a tweet on books that you would like us to get into after farid is done on his thing and we'll try to get some you know i don't know i like i like books that are kind of basic that bring us through but we can also go into the you know modern poker theory um we can go into 
Andrew Brokus's second book, you know, Play Optimal Poker 2, or we could go into something a little bit more basic if we want to, but let's get a, a show of hands as to what type of books that people want us to cover, and we'll jump into those and cover them as best we can. And Just Rob, what's that, what's that Twitter address again? Uh, Rabman50. I'm, I'm Rabman50 a- everywhere, remember? Yeah. Everywhere, I'm send everywhere you a in twit. the nation, too, right now. Send me a twit. <laughs> send me a twit. Man 50. <laughs> just so everybody's clear, when we're talking about asking for book ideas, that is poker books, not if you looked at, listened to the beginning of the podcast. We were talking. <laughs> well, no. No. Someone said no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, <you> know, <laughs> true. That's great. Right. Somebody wants us to cover The Lord of the Rings. I mean, I'm sure we could do that, too. But Yeah, Wheel of Time is maybe my favorite series of all time. And, but I will say. study. Yeah, yes. I think Rob and I would go hand in hand for that one. But yeah. that's a great point, Rob. So we are take because the Freed uh, course is going from uh, through February, um, we are going to take a break on the Wednesday night activity. So that'll be a couple of book studies, a focus, and a strat chat that we'll just have to make up um, in March. I think the, the Freed stuff, I think, is February 3rd to March 5th. I think that's, that's the right. days, but it's the Wednesday and Friday of those five weeks. Uh, it's going to be locked in and also... Uh, we're doing a supplemental piece. If you if you want to join that, join that freed study. You can also, in addition to or or just by itself, you can actually jump into some rec poker discussions around that training as well, which are going to include some hours in the interior of that week as well. So, uh, really, those five weeks we're going to be pretty much focused on engaging with Fareed uh, and and that study, and then talking about those studies. So, I think that's a good idea to kind of take a break from the other stuff because it's going to be pretty intense. I think. Mm. Cool. And anything else going on in the nation? Go ahead, John. Well, one really important thing. Um, I think that the Dragon Reborn is the best book <laughs> of the Wheel of Time series. So, just. Am I the only one that had no idea what's happening? Uh, that was, Andrew doesn't know. Book number two, wasn't it? Wasn't that book number three? Oh, it's number three? Okay, that's yeah. the one I'm, in, I'm reading right now then. So I haven't even finished it yet. I, that, that was my favorite. You're in for a treat. Yeah. So I think we need to start a third podcast each week about uh, the, the non science fiction book. and fantasy books. Yeah, you guys, man. I bet there's a, there's an audience for it, right? You guys should start a little book study on Discord. Get on, jump in the voice channel on every night, and you guys talk about. You know, we don't have to be all poker. That's what we're going to focus on with the podcast and stuff. But if it's all about community, if there's a bunch of you that want to talk about sci-fi books, man, start a group. Do it. Get her start done. Start a group. Yeah, let's start, start a, group. a group. Why not? Good thing. Yeah. <laughs> all right oh, guys well, anything else for the good of the order i know we we always say we're going to cut these shorter and then we go long but uh, a lot of good stuff going on i see no i see head shaking all right guys well let's uh let's wrap it up there thanks to you guys for uh, for jumping on here ben doug kim martha jamel thanks for jumping on there are members that are part of this thing we got the music starting early so uh it'll it'll be done by the time i start stop talking but that's okay uh you don't have to restart it it's okay uh, just let it go. But our, our sponsors are uh, Running Aces, Racetrack Casino and Hotel. Big finish there. Uh, website app, Learn Pro Poker, the small, small business community. Uh, thanks to our guest, man, Sky Matsuhashi. That was super fun. Uh, Andrew, Rob, John, Jim, Chris, the great panel that we have, the folks that jumped on there. Uh, but, yeah, that's it. Uh, we will chat with you guys. I guess the next episode will be a forums episode that released on Sunday, and then we'll chat back with you here on, uh, on Tuesday. All right, guys, take, take care. Have a good one.